Hi, I'm Isaac. I'm here to walk through this AI coding trace dissection document that I put together. The reason that I put it together is to show what happens during an AI coding trace when your prompt is unclear, even when you add things that are uh, really helpful. So Git MCP is an MCP server that can grab tools. Um, Playwright is something that is really useful for web development. It lets your agent go look and click and um, search through your app. Um, fill out forms and test. Um, and I often see people that just add a few tools and think that's enough to get, you know, the most value out of these coding agents um, or that that's enough to get everything you need. Uh, unfortunately, it requires a little bit more intentionality than that. So let's jump into it. So um, here is this um, prompt. Add a generate outline with AI button and functionality below all the rest of the features on the page, see to do's, and explore the repo first. Um, so this is actual um, agent history. Um, this is mine gets stored by uh, spec story. And so uh, the problem with this prompt is that it's too unclear. And so let's walk through what happened. The first thing it did is we see it... Um, look at all the different files. It's reading the files, it's seeing what's in there, exactly what I asked. Um, it did tool calls for the documentation. It used the MCP to look up the documentation. That's fantastic. That's what I would want you know, any agent to do. Um, if I gave it the option to do so, that's what I would do if I was building you know, an air app manually. Um, looking at the documentation is fantastic. Uh, the next thing it does is it creates a to-do list. This to-do list has uh, a lot of good information. It's telling it to use Playwright uh, on localhost. Um, and then the app, uh, the, the agent starts working without me. So it just kind of jumps directly into, into it. If you're paying attention, you can stop it. Um, but if you don't, if you're not careful, AI will just kind of keep moving um, through, through whatever task. As we go, we can look through and we can see just from the prompt that it creates that it drifts off what I had intended. Um, it had no way to know it was drifting off from what I intended because I didn't give it any clarity. I didn't give it any any, any information as to what I was thinking. Um, but it did. Um, even if I had specified, uh, there, there will be some drift. Um, but the clarity makes it a lot worse. So here's what we got. Um, I look here, it's giving the mice and the try description. That's not all the information that's needed for the prompt. And so right off the bat, it's lacking. Um, that might be okay. I could go in and modify the data and add add more information to the prompt, depending on how it structured it. I don't, you know, I'm not, not sure how the quality of the code. Um, so I'd probably have to do some refactoring. Um, says here, okay. It wants to respect the nesting structure. That's great. It incorporates, it creates a compelling narrative flow. Um, it's approximately 350 to 500 words. You know, I that, that wasn't something that I specified. I don't think that's um, not what I intended. Um, the outline should read as a summary of the story. And this uh, story outline and prose form are both things that are not at all what I had in mind. Um, and so it interpreted this a little bit differently than I intended. And then furthermore, uh, I don't think Sonnet is a good model for this. If I had thought about it for a few seconds, uh, I would have specified a different model to use. Um, and so these are all small things I'll have to go in and change um, or, or ask the agent to change, and, and it just takes a lot longer. Once all that's done, it starts going back and doing some uh, pretty, pretty great things. We can see it navigates to my app. It's going to localhost 8000. That's great. Um, it then clicks. And what we can see here is it uh, it's clicking on the generate outline button. It's waiting for it. That's all fantastic. Um, we can see it says that it's working. Once it determines that it works, it goes and takes a screenshot. And so it looks at the UI to make sure the UI is there. Uh, all that seems very nice. That's exactly what I would do. Right? Like when I build a feature, it seems to work. Um, I tested it programmatically. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up localhost 8000, go click on the button, and see if it actually generates and see how it looks. Like as a user, how does it feel? Um, and so uh, it says it gave me an outline. It says it's all done. That's great. 
So the next thing is I go and I, I check. I see, like, is it really done? Uh, unfortunately, um, it's not quite what I wanted. You know, I mentioned the prompt, but there's more. So it did what I asked, but, you know, what I asked was vague. So it uh, filled in some details. Um, basically, this response is technically okay. Like, if I was looking at the prompt that I gave it and I saw this output, you know, I would say, like, and I had I knew nothing about this app or this use case. I might say like I don't. Maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe these cards might go really low, and so you know this the space is going to be filled. Um, I wouldn't know enough to know that this drifted off intent. Um, but the outline isn't very good or outline look, and this layout layout is very bad because I do know that this this space should have been filled, and so. Um, this is kind of the risk that you have. A lot of people will add uh, a bunch of tools, you know, oftentimes so many that it kind of fills up your context window uh, or a lot of the context window, and then um, gives it a vague prompt, figuring that these these tools will be enough to to fill in the gaps. And so, what can you do about this? Um, these are things we teach in our Eleanor and I teach in our Elite AI Assisted Coding course. Um, there's um, defining specifications up front product managers have a lot more you know experience than that typically than developers do um, but being clear about what you're looking for and what you're trying to design in the vision is extremely helpful for these agents um, there's also other techniques where you work in smaller chunks um, that's something that software developers have done forever you i mean really everybody it's not just software developers is if you have a big problem that's too big to solve you break it into small enough pieces that you can solve each of them easily. Check and increment and build as you go. In this case, this feature is fairly simple. Um, and so you might be able to have this feature done adequately in, uh, you know, with a specification. But in larger features, you will have to break them down into smaller chunks.